Let us take up our hymnals, open them to page 110 for our entrance antiphon. Love you, my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O oh Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. Of you, my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O oh Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. O oh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? Of you, my heart has spoken. Seek thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek, hide not your face from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God, God and, and you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inward, inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. 
It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjugation to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. 
As they were about to part from him, Peter said to James, Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son, listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. How's everyone? Well, I just have a couple of announcements first. Uh, registration for level one to eight of our religious ed programs for this coming year is now open. You should receive registration forms in the mail this week. If you don't, just let us, let us know. That way we can update your address in um, the records that we have. There are also registration forms in the entrance area, and if you'd like to register online, you can register on the parish website as well. The Friends of St. Philip Neri are reading the life of Venerable Augustine Tolton beginning March 24th, and the, they'll meet at 10.30 a.m. For more information, you can find it on the bulletin, the website, or speak to Brother Don after the Mass. And then also, uh, we now have, where are they? We now have hearing assistance devices at Mass for anyone who has difficulty hearing with the, the speakers. Um, all you need to bring is your own headphones and they just plug into the device and it'll link basically right into the sound system so you can hear nice and easy. If, any, if you know anyone who can't hear me right now because they usually can't hear it, let them know about this. Um, that way they can, they can plug into this. And so beginning next week and when you come to Mass, you can just ask one of the ushers for one of the hearing devices and they'll, they'll get one for you. And then at the end of the Mass, you just return it to the ushers uh, before you head out. And if you accidentally bring it home, bring it back right away because <laughs> we'll need it, need it in time. And lastly, we're looking for a fully bilingual English and Spanish volunteer to assist assist us in the parish office on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. If you can spare a couple of hours to volunteer on, on, uh, during these times on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, please call the parish office. Well, we continue our sermon series on the Ten Commandments this week, and we'll talk about the Third Commandment today, Remember to Keep Holy the Lord's Day. You know, teaching the confirmation class over the summer is one of my favorite classes to teach. And one of the reasons is because they ask the hardest questions. They're starting to, to mature in their faith and to begin to think a little bit more about what things mean. And they ask questions that actually send you back to your textbooks from seminary. <laughs> but one of the questions we often talk about is, why do I have to confess my sins to a priest? And the reason is pretty simple. Jesus set it up this way. That's the way Jesus wanted it and established it. He gave the apostles a share in his priesthood and he breathed the Holy Spirit upon them and said to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven. Now, how are the apostles able to know about the sins of anyone unless someone's telling them? And how are they able to know about these sins unless people are confessing their sins to them in this way? Well, there's a deeper reason lying behind this simple fact that Jesus set things up this way. How many of you have had a friend before? Raise your hand or have friends now. <laughs> and was there ever a time when they hurt you in by words or actions? They did something to you that hurt, hurt you? Yes or no? Did that ever happen? Yes. Yeah. And did they apologize? No? Sometimes, okay, well, you need new friends. <laughs> we'll work on getting you new friends. <laughs> well, what if, let's say they apologize, or if you've ever had a time where they did apologize to you, what if instead of apologizing and repairing the damage they did to you, they simply decided, I don't need to say I'm sorry to them out loud, and I don't need to change my behavior either. I'm just gonna say sorry in my heart, and it'll be all better. That'd be pretty messed up, right? <laughs> What's the problem with that? When healing a hurt relationship, whatever we're trying to do to repair that relationship in the reconciliation we're trying to bring about, it has to be acceptable to the other person. We don't just make it up ourselves and decide that what I think is going to be the way. That would just be having a relationship with yourself, and that's not a friendship. 
We have to hear from them what would repair the damage that's been done in our, rela in our relationship. Well, in confession, Jesus sets the terms for forgiving us and healing our relationship when we've sinned against him or another. And it's similar with the third commandment and why God gives us a specific form of worship. God has invited us into a relationship with him, a relationship we couldn't have by our own powers because he infinitely transcends us. We can't force ourselves into the life of God and figure out what it's like to be God and what, what he wants unless he tells us, unless he shows it to us. So he has to teach us what it means to be in that relationship and how we should worship him. We don't just invent it ourselves. That's why it makes no sense in our relationship with God to not come to Mass on Sundays because we think, I'm spiritual but not religious, or I experience God in creation but not in church, or I just pray to God in my heart and that's enough for Sunday. These are all great things, but God is religious. He established the Catholic faith and he invites us into a relationship with him through it and the family that he created. And God is present in the beauty of creation, but not like he is in the church. The experience of God in this life doesn't get more real than Jesus' real presence in the Holy Eucharist. And God knows what's in our hearts better than we do. And he knows, like we do, that sometimes we think a lot about where we're at or what we think of ourselves or have an image of ourselves in our heart, and it ends up not being the case in reality. And he knows, as we do as well, that we prove what's on the inside by public, concrete, and tangible actions. And the adoration and praise of God together, on church, together in church on Sundays is the action that he told us shows the worship of him in our hearts. This is the deeper reason behind the third commandment. God sets the terms for worshiping him and our relationship with him. But God also gave us this commandment for another reason. We need him. It's not because it completes God in some way like he's missing something. He's infinitely perfect and blessed and he has no need of our praises. Rather, it's because it completes us. We've been made for the love and adoration of God. And when it's missing, we're a mess. We're restless because we're missing the one thing necessary from our lives. And so the Lord teaches us how to do that thing that we need to do to be happy in this life and in the next. God, who is infinitely beyond us, stoops down to us as our loving Father and teaches us and speaks to us at our level and in a way that we can understand. In the Mass and the sacraments, he uses signs and symbols, words and music, vestments and candles, churches and bells, incense and water, you and me, bread and wine changed into his body and blood to show us this is how you worship me. This is the first and most important part of keeping holy the Sabbath, worshiping God as he wants to be worshiped with all his sons and daughters gathered around him so that he can fill them with his blessing every Sunday and holy day of obligation. There's another aspect of keeping holy the Sabbath though, and it flows from the worship of God, and that's rest. We don't live to work, we work to live. We don't live to work, we need to rest from our labor. Work is, a good, is good and it's beautiful and it's a gift from God and it's something we can offer back to God as a beautiful offering to him that's very pleasing to him, but it's not God. This is why God tells us to set it aside and rest in him on this day. And when we do this, we share in the rest that he took on the seventh day after creating the heavens and the earth. We let him fill us with joy and gratitude for Jesus' resurrection, and we look forward to the peace and eternal rest that he promises in heaven, where there's no more work. <laughs> That's good news, no more work in heaven. We work instead to live. Sunday should be set aside for those things that we live for, growing closer to God through the mass, prayer, reading his word, spending time with our family and friends, 
enjoying the beauty of creation, doing works of love and mercy for those in need. These are the things that we truly live for. So let's enter more deeply into the joyful adoration of God and learn here on this day and in this Mass how to treasure and value all the other things of life in their proper place, how to make our whole week one grateful offering that finds its source and summit every Sunday. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. With the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop David O'Connell, and for our priests and brothers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And the men and boys of our parish whom God is calling to be priests and brothers, especially in the Red Bank Oratory of St. Philip Neri, and for the women and girls whom God is calling to be sisters, that they have the courage to say yes to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For husbands and wives and widows and widowers, that they may lead their families to greater holiness and fidelity to Christ and his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and those in need, that the Lord may inspire in us new ways of serving him and them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of our families and parish, and for those that have no one to pray for them, that our prayers may accompany them as they are prepared for paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the special intentions we hold within our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine, for those who are suffering, those who are fleeing their country, and those who've lost their lives, and for an end to the conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your kindness and mercy, we ask you to please hear and answer our prayers according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite the children to bring their gifts to the altar, and uh, when you come up, children, just remember to genuflect on the way up and then on the way back. Sing together number 260 in our hymnals, the glory of these 40 days, number 260. 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifices of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abaot, Plenis Uncelli, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile to himself all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tuam Annunciamus Domine Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemur Donec Venias Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through who him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. can be found on page 112 in your hymnal. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly powers. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bow down before the Lord, majestic in holiness. The voice of the Lord upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor. The voice of the Lord shatters cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leave like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes flames of fire. The voice of the Lord rends the oak tree and strips the forest bare. In his temple they all cry glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. We continue singing number 800, 281. What wondrous love is this? Number 281.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we go forth, we sing number 267, "'Tis Good Lord to Be Here," number 267.